Hello and welcome to the Dastardly D&D Foundry tutorial series. My name is Lemmy. Nice to meet you. Today we're going to be taking a little look at how to build your own landing page. Now you've seen landing pages before. A lot of uh, a lot of streamers will use a landing page just to make the, the setup look very pretty. But I have to say it is incredibly useful to use a landing page even if you're playing in your own private games. So first things first, we are going to delete our default scene there because we don't need it and we're going to create a new one. I'm going to simply call this landing page. Now as you can see it is very uh, very bland, uh, very grey, not, not much going on here. Um, so my plan, our plan, is to create something that looks like this. This is the landing page that I use for my own Dungeons and Dragons live streams, which you can catch almost every Saturday on the YouTube. So back to Foundry, we are going to be making a very similar one. Mind you, this is a more of a generic landing page we'll be making today because I don't have a particular campaign in mind. So let's begin by simply reducing the background color to black. Then I'm going to go to my grid. I'm going to change the scene dimensions to 2560 by 1440. I've had to untick this uh, this link there, which keeps the aspect ratio the same. Now the reason we're using 2560 by 1440 is it is a fairly common screen resolution and it also has the benefit of looking good on uh, lower resolution monitors like 1920 by 1080. We are also going to remove this. We don't need a grid at all so we'll change that to gridless. And then finally we are going to reduce the padding percentage to zero. We will need a background image before we begin. Now, yours will look quite different to mine, mostly because I've added uh, a lot of stuff over the uh, years that I've been using Foundry, but simply find the directory that you would like to put your files into. I'm going to be putting mine into my map tiles folder, but you can put it directly into the root directory if you wish. And from here, we are going to create a new folder and I will call this landing page assets. Within our landing page assets, we will click choose file and we will import the files that we need. So for this particular instance, I'm going to be importing the image of a wooden table. Once it has uploaded, click the uh, new file, select and save changes, and it should appear on your map. And there we are. So this is our beginning stage. From here, well, the world is your oyster, but we will be using the tiles. Over on the side here, you can see tile controls. If we click on that, we go down until we see this folder icon. That is your tile browser. Opening that should bring you to the folder that you are just in. Over here, I am going to import all of my assets to the landing page assets folder. All right, I have now imported all of my assets. You can find these on my Patreon with our tile browser over at the side here, we can import our assets. So for example, I have a tablecloth here. That I can place right in the center. It is fairly important that you build this up from bottom to top. That way you don't have to fiddle around too much with trying to reorder your tiles. For example, if I were to place this pile of coins and then place my tablecloth, I would have to click on the tablecloth and over here we have move down and move up and these will move it to the bottom unfortunately not one layer down so with that in mind you want to build them up layer by layer essentially now this can be made easier with a module called levels Levels allows you to create actual layers, much like a Photoshop file, where you can place all of your objects. We will not be using that today. We are going, we are going module free. 
We'll begin just by placing some of our uh, some of our tiles. We have some prefabs here that I've made where our gold coins are already in a nice pile there. But we can also put a few stragglers that have fallen from the pile. We have a tankard of ale. Place that over there. And because we've got ale and we don't have a coaster, let's put a little coffee ring on the ground there. As a matter of fact, because because we're using a coffee ring, let's make that a cup of coffee instead. Scale that up, make it look like it matches the uh, rough size of the coffee stain there. And there we have it. Next, let's talk about overlays. So, included in the pack provided on Patreon, there are a variety of overlays, such as this one here. Uh, which is uh, water that has spilled onto the scene there. We can put that towards the bottom and as you can see it has saturated the, uh, the table and the tablecloth. Otherwise we have a few more. Uh, for example we have, let's place that in here, we have some sand. We can do the same here and you know what, let's Put the sand at the bottom and have the tablecloth over the top. You can also have the same file, uh, the same tile in there twice. So let's do that. Let's add another pile of sand into our scene. And as you can see, this one is now over the top. And what we can do now is double right click on our sand. And let's reduce that opacity. So there's a little bit of sand there over the top of some of our other tiles. I want to make sure that we get that as close as possible to the, uh, the original underneath. And then we will add our map. I very much like having a map and you could go and draw your own map on here if that's what you would like to do. Me personally, I don't quite like the drawing tools available in Foundry, so we won't be doing that. Instead, we have some hollowed out parchments here, like so. And what we will be doing is importing our map first. So let's find a map. Today we'll be using this one. Very large. If your maps are too big, you very well might need to create a tile first, like so. You can do that and then select your map in here and it will fill the tile that you have created. So I'm going to roughly put my map in place. So we will be using landing page assets and I will place this over the top, like so. And there you have a, a little map now, this is definitely going to be uh, nicer if you have a, a sepia tone uh, map. Now we have a little bit of space here. I will be filling that space with another piece of parchment. And in here we can add, if we go to our drawing tools, we can go to draw text and drag like so. Now, while we're in here, we will remove the outline and we will change the color of the text to a nice dark brown like so you may copy the uh, hex code there if you like um, otherwise just experiment now in this section where it says text label that is where our actual text will go so we will call this tutorial world and let's make that font size uh, large, so let's say 120. We can change our font. That's nice. That's uh, reminiscent of the uh, Dungeons and Dragons font there as well. Place that there, and we can. Let's add a candle down here. Scale that up a little bit, and that can be where we are going to add a source of lighting to our scene that will bring the whole thing to life in just a moment. We can also add just some other knickknacks about 
just to make the place look busy, make it look uh, lived in. Now, you don't have to make sure everything is fully in the scene either. Let's have that just outside the scene with a little bit. Let's, let's place a coin so it's just slightly on top of the dagger there just to add a bit of dimension to it. Now, as I've gone on here, I have uh, come to the decision that I am not particularly fussed on this item in the background here. If I just want to change the colour and we have others available, we can do so. So let's make that purple. And we have our purple there now. We can perhaps scale some of this up. I think that the map is a very important part of this scene, so I will be moving other things around to make room for it. Keep in mind that lay layering your objects like this, pla placing things on top of one another, while it uh, can look messy, it does add an air of realism to the scene. Over here, I usually leave a little bit of space for my player's icons. I'm still not particularly happy with the tablecloth in this particular scene. So. And there we have it. We have built up our landing page. All right. Now that we've got to this stage, we can begin to think about our lighting. If I add a light source over here, let's make that fairly large. I'm going to go to light animation and turn this into a torch. The torch is a great and very versatile uh, animation source, uh, uh, animation type rather, and you'll have a flickering light coming from this direction over here. We can then add more lighting with different colors. So I will be using, uh, let's go for some nice color like that. And then if we go to configure our landing page again, we can bring the darkness level up like so. As you can see, turning that light on and off there um, gives us an idea of how, how dark it is underneath. And we can change our luminosity here so that we are not brightening up the scene too much. We're just giving it a little bit of color. Again, hide and unhide, and you can see that difference there. Let's bring that down even further to 0 0.05. Saturation, bring that down slightly, and bring our color intensity down just enough to make it look like our candle over here is lighting up our scene and there you have it a very very simple very easy way to build up your own landing page without even needing photoshop now for those of you out there that would like to be able to use photoshop in the preparation of their landing pages i can help you out there too simply subscribe to the channel keep an eye out for the next landing page tutorial where i will go over the process using photoshop don't forget, if you want access to these assets, you can find them over on my Patreon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next Dastardly D&D tutorial. Goodbye. And a great big thanks to all of our patrons, especially the Dastardly DMs, Whimsical Wisp, and Moxie the Demon.